Hello everybody, this is Chaplain Bob Walker, Light of the World Ministries. In John 8, 12, Jesus said, I am the light of the world. He that followeth me shall not walk in darkness, but shall have the light of life. Um, Sally from Colorado gave me some papers, and I thought, wow, these are really worth putting together. Uh, the title of this study is going to be The Great Earthquake of Revelation, Great Hail, Two Witnesses, and Other Things. The Earth Shakes, Quakes, and Breaks. All right, let's go to Revelation chapter 6. Uh, let's see. And she does verse number 12. Through 14. And I beheld when he had opened the sixth seal, and lo, there was a great earthquake, and the sun became black as sackcloth of hair, and the moon became as blood. And the stars of heaven fell unto the earth, even as a fig tree casteth her untimely figs when she is shaken of a mighty wind. And the heaven departed as a scroll when it is rolled together, and every mountain and island were moved out of their places. Now, there's a group of people that call themselves preterists. And they will tell you that uh, in Matthew 24, that basically all scripture is fulfilled. It's all past. And then there's a group called uh, futurists, which say that all fut uh, scriptural prophecy is future. And personally, I think they're all wrong if they say, you know, generally if you say all and every without exception, generally you're going to be wrong. Okay? Did, did every mountain and island moved out of their places? I haven't seen it. Um, what can I tell you? All right, so let's take a look at what she quotes next. Revelation chapter 10. All right, in Revelation chapter 10 and verse 7, it says, But in the days of the voice of the seventh angel... When he shall begin to sound, now this is the seventh trump. This is at the end of the tribulation, people. That's my note. But in the days of the voice of the seventh angel, when he shall begin to sound, the mystery of God should be finished as he hath declared to his servants the prophets. All right, so um, let's go to number 11, the 11th chapter of Revelation. And we will read the following. Let's see. We're going to read verses. I guess we'll read at the beginning. May as well. Yeah, we're going to read pretty much Revelation 11. Uh, verse 1. And there was given me a reed like unto a rod, and the angel stood, saying, Rise, and measure the temple of God and the altar, and them that worship therein. Now, please remember something, people. Uh, the book of Revelation is not in chronological order. Okay, it skips around. My note there. Verse 2. But the court which is without the temple, leave out and measure it not, for it is given unto the Gentiles. Um, that's the same word as translated as nations. Uh, sometimes Gentiles, sometimes nations. Same word. In the um, Greek, which is what the New Testament was written in, it's the word ethnos. It's where we get the word ethnic group. You know, like uh, Caucasians are an ethnic group. Negroes are an ethnic group. So, for it is given unto the Gentiles in the holy city, shall they tread underfoot forty and two months. And I will give power unto my two witnesses. And they shall prophesy a thousand two hundred and threescore days clothed in sackcloth. 
These are the two olive trees and the two candlesticks standing before the God of the earth. Bob's note here. One of them is going to be Elijah. Uh, people are divided on who's going to be the second one. Uh, some people say Moses. Some people say Enoch. Uh, I don't know. Take your pick. I did a Bible study on the two witnesses and who I think the second one's going to be. I tend to lean towards Enoch because Enoch never died, same as Elijah. They were both taken up to heaven. But um, at the transfiguration of Jesus, who appeared? Moses and Elijah, the law and the prophets, right? So, I don't know. Take your pick. All right, back to her word. I'm, I'm done giving my commentary. These are the two olive trees and the two candlesticks standing before, before the God of the earth. And if any man will hurt them, fire proceedeth out of their mouth and devoureth their enemies. And if any man will hurt them, he must in this manner be killed. Now, Elijah, I did an hour and 40 minute study on Elijah. Uh, he called down fire from heaven to destroy uh, 51 men, who were soldiers that were trying to capture and kill him for Ahab. King Ahab, you know, the Ahab who was married to Jezebel? Yeah. And if you've never read, if you don't know what I'm talking about, you need to read the Old Testament. All right, so. If any man will hurt them, fire proceedeth out of their mouth and devoureth their enemies. And if any man will hurt them, he must in this manner be killed. These have power to shut heaven. Bob's note again. Um, Elijah made it so it didn't rain for three years in Israel as judgment against Ahab. Okay, these have power to shut heaven that it rain not in the days of their prophecy, and they have power over waters to turn them to blood. Bob's note, just like uh, Moses did in Egypt, right? Okay, let's continue. And to smite the earth with all plagues as often as they will. And when they have finished their testimony, the beast that ascendeth out of the bottomless pit shall make war against them and shall overcome them and kill them. And their dead bodies shall lie in the street of the great city which spiritually is called Sodom and Egypt, where also our Lord was crucified. Huh. The great city is compared, what's spiritually compared to Sodom and Egypt, where our Lord was crucified. And people will tell you that this is Rome. Gee, I didn't know uh, their, their Messiah was crucified in Rome. My Messiah, Christ, was crucified in Jerusalem. And they'll argue and say, well, he was crucified outside of Jerusalem. Well, I'm sorry, outside of Jerusalem is still Jerusalem, and it's not Rome. So the great city is spiritually called Sodom and Egypt. And I've never read in the Bible anywhere where Bi the Bible says anything good about Egypt. Nothing. If anybody can show me, um, I'd be very interested. That's the end of my commentary there. Verse 9. And they of the people and kindreds and tongues and nations shall see their dead bodies three days and a half and shall not suffer or allow their dead bodies to be put in graves. And they that dwell upon the earth shall rejoice over them and make merry and shall send gifts one to another. Boy, that sounds like Christmas, doesn't it? I mean, that Bob's commentary there. Because these two prophets tormented them that dwell on the earth. And after three days and a half, the spirit of life from God entered into them. Bob's note again, just like Lazarus, right? Um, and after three days and a half, the spirit of life from God entered into them, and they stood upon their feet, and great fear fell upon them which saw them. And they heard a great voice from heaven saying unto them, Come up hither. And they ascended up to heaven in a cloud, and their enemies beheld them. And the same hour was there a great earthquake. A great earthquake, and the tenth part of the city fell, and the earth, and in the earthquake were set, slain of men seven thousand, and the remnant were affrighted and gave glory to the God of heaven. The second woe is past, and behold, the third woe cometh quickly. And the seventh angel sounded, and there were great voices in heaven, saying, 
The kingdoms of this world are become the kingdoms of our Lord and of his Christ, and he shall reign forever and ever. And the four and twenty elders, which sat before God on their seats, fell upon their faces and worshipped God. Um, I did a Bible study on who the 24 elders were. Personally, I think it's the 12 apostles, including Paul, and the 12 tribes of Israel. That's my opinion. I might be wrong. I don't know. Verse 17. Uh, so the four and twenty elders which sat before God on their seats fell upon their faces and worshipped God, saying, We give thee thanks, O Lord God Almighty, which art and wast and art to come, because thou hast taken to thee thy great power and hast reigned. And the nations were angry, and thy wrath has come, and the time of the dead, that they should be judged, and that thou shouldest give reward unto thy servants, the prophets, and to the saints, and them that fear thy name, small and great, and shouldest destroy them which destroy the earth. The temple of God was opened in heaven, and there was seen in his temple the ark of his testament. And there were lightnings and voices and thunderings and an earthquake and great hail. Woo-hoo! All right, let me read what uh, she writes here. Sally. She writes, and I quote, In the days of the sounding of the seventh angel, when he's about to sound, the mystery of God would be finished. I'll give power to my two witnesses, and they'll prophesy 1,260 days. When they finish their testimony, the beast will make war against them, overcome them, and kill them. The world will see their dead bodies lie in the street for three and a half days. Then the breath of life from God entered, in, entered them, and they stood on their feet, and great fear fell on those who saw them. The voice from heaven said, Come up here. And they ascended to heaven in a cloud, and their enemies saw them. The, this last passage helps put the timing of the great earthquake in perspective. And then in Revelation 13 through 18, in the same hour there was a great earthquake, and the tenth of the city fell. In the earthquake, 7,000 people were killed, and the rest were afraid and gave glory to the God of heaven. The second woe was fast. Behold, the third woe was coming quickly. Then the seventh angel sounded, loud voices in heaven said, The kingdoms of this world have become the kingdoms of our Lord and of and his Christ, and will reign forever. Your wrath has come, and the time has come for judging the dead and rewarding your servants. Uh, she writes, The temple of God was opened in heaven, the ark of his covenant seen, and there were lightnings, noises, thunder, an earthquake, and great hail. Woo-hoo! All right, let's take a look at Revelation uh, 16. She says in 17 through 21, First, I'm going to read the passages in the King James, and then I'm going to read what she writes. And the seventh angel poured out his vial into the air, and there came a great voice out of the temple of heaven from the throne, saying, It is done. Now, if you're a preterist, preterist uh, you say, All this is past. Uh, is it all past? Did a voice come out of the temple of heaven? Um I don't know. I haven't heard it, you know. When, uh, after the resurrection of Jesus, uh, I believe it's in the book of Luke, uh, he uh, talked to the disciples for a while. Remember, he came back and he was uh, cooking fish when Peter was fishing and he put his coat on because he was naked and he went and swam in the water to meet him. And then... Uh, Afterwards, he was done, he went up into heaven in the clouds. And the angels that were standing around about him says, well, why are you looking up in the clouds? Jesus is going to come back in like manner. Like manner. So, until you see Jesus coming back in the clouds, because Paul writes that every eye shall see him, um, until that happens, you know, and we're supposed to be caught up in the air. If we're not caught up in the air to be with Christ, it's the wrong Messiah. And that's what I think preterists are going to be fooled. They're going to take the beast, the false prophet, the, Messiah, uh, the Antichrist, the man of sin, the son of perdition, and they're going to listen to the Antichrist over in the Middle East thinking that that is the Messiah. And it's going to be the wrong Messiah. You got to decide. 
uh, now this is I for I've been talking. This is all my stuff, not Sally's. But you got to decide: Does Jesus come first, or is the the Antichrist come first? I say the Antichrist comes first. But there are people who will tell you that the Antichrist came in 70 A.D. when General Titus uh, destroyed Jerusalem in 70 A.D. And they'll tell you that uh, Titus was, and Rome, General Titus, the Roman uh, general, destroyed Jerusalem, that he was the Antichrist. Well, guess what? I don't think that his, uh, the emperor of Rome would have appreciated Titus telling everybody that he is God, sitting in the temple of God, proclaiming himself that he is God. You know, think about it. If a, an American army general said that he was God and Trump had to worship him, uh, do you, what do you think would happen? You know, I mean, this is the kind of stuff that they believe. Yeah, Matthew 24, a lot of those prophecies were fulfilled in 70 AD. I, I don't deny that. Part of it's Partially, you know, it wasn't ultimately fulfilled. So, I don't know. you got to decide. Has the mark of the beast happened? Preterists will tell you it has. All right, so let's read um, Revelation 16, uh, verses 17 through 21, and then I'll read what she writes. And the seventh angel poured out his vial into the air, and there came a great voice out of the temple of heaven from the throne, saying, It is done. And there were voices and thunders and lightnings, and there was a great earthquake, such as was not since men were upon the earth, so mighty an earthquake and so great. And the great city, you know the great city, the one where Christ was crucified, we read earlier, Bob's note there. And the great city was divided into three parts. Has that happened yet? No. And the great city was divided into three parts, and the cities of the nations fell, and great Babylon came in remembrance before God to give unto her the cup of the wine of the fierceness of his wrath. Not judgment, wrath. There's a difference between judgment and wrath. When your parents spank you, it's judgment for, you know, doing the wrong thing. But wrath, look out. And every island fled away and the mountains were not found. Did that happen yet? No. So it's got to be future. And of course, preterists will say, well, you know, it's figuratively. It's figuratively. Well, I don't know. 21. And there fell upon men a great hail out of heaven, every stone about the weight of a talent. Uh, Bob's note here. If I remember correctly, a talent is about 70 pounds. Can you imagine getting hit on the head by a 70-pound piece of rock. Okay. Every stone about the weight of a talent, and men blasphemed God because of the plague of the hell, for the plague thereof was exceeding great. All right, let's read what Sally says here. The seventh angel poured out his bowl into the air, and loud voices from the temple said, It is done. And there were noises, noises, thunders, lightnings, and a great earthquake, such a mighty and great earthquake as had not occurred since Men were upon the earth. The great city was divided into three parts, and the cities and the nations fell. God gave Babylon the fierceness of his wrath. Then every island fled away, and the mountains were not found. And great hail from heaven fell upon men, each hailstone about the weight of a talent. Men blaspheming God, because the hail was exceeding great. Wow. Now, let's go to Joel, the book of Joel. The book of Joel is one of the minor prophets. Minor, they call it because of the size, not because of its importance. It's one of those books just before the New Testament like Matthew. All right. Um, let's see. And she writes, uh, Joel talks about the reaping of the earth. You know, in Revelation, it talks about uh, putting in the sickle for the reaping. Read this, Joel 3, 13. Put ye in the sickle, for the harvest is ripe. Come, get ye down, for the press is full, the fats overflow, for their wickedness is great. Now, obviously, Bob's note here, they're not talking about a weed harvest, because wheat is not wicked. They're talking about the reaping of the earth. 
Um, read the, the parable of the wheat and the tares, people. Okay. Uh, for their wickedness is great. Multitudes, multitudes in the valley of decision. For the day of the Lord is near in the valley of decision. The sun and the moon shall be darkened, and the stars shall withdraw their shining. The Lord also shall roar out of Zion and utter his voice from Jerusalem, and the heavens and the earth shall shake. But the Lord will be the hope of his people and the strength of the children of Israel. Amen. All right, Sally writes, The great earthquake of the seals, the trumpets and the bulls may all be one and the same, seen from different perspectives and focusing on different aspects. This will occur at the end of the age when the Lord will stone the earth and men with hail, and then he'll destroy with fire. And she writes, see paper on the seven judgments. I don't have, I might have that. I'm not sure. All right. She writes, if the seven seals are an overall view of the entire seven-year tribulation, focusing on the first half, the reign of the beast and the martyrs, the horsemen of the apocalypse, and the fifth seal. The sixth seal may then represent the great tribulation, uh, the trumpets and bowls. The sixth seal is composed of elements which are found in the Great Tribulation, including a great earthquake. Bob's note here. The first three and a half years is called the time of Jacob's trouble, I believe. No, I'm sorry. Wrong, I'm wrong. I'm, I'm getting ahead of myself. It's called the time of sorrows. And then the last half is the time of Jacob's trouble. Um, I mean, the first three and a half years are going to be bad, but the last three and a half years are going to be really bad. Um, if you go to YouTube and click on my name and then go to, that's my homepage. And, uh, you'll see at the homepage is say playlists towards the middle, towards the upper half. Click on that. Look some, some of the playlists and I've got some series that, um, uh, haven't all been deleted from YouTube and you could read you know, listen to more stuff on the end times. I've done a lot of stuff on the end times. All right, that's the end of me talking my stuff. I'm going to go back to Sally here. Evidently, this great earthquake begins right before the seventh trumpet. Within an hour of the resurrection of the two witnesses, the trumpets may show the onset of end time events with the bowls showing the more extreme completion of the same events. This could count for what appears to be a slight difference in the order of the great earthquake and last judgment. The great earthquake can begin before the seventh judgment, uh, the trumpet, yet end in the seventh judgment, which is the bowl. However, it seems that the great hail begins at the seventh trump and also intensifies until it ends in the seventh bowl, showing its beginning of completion in one seventh judgment and others are also described with the exception of the great earthquake. Evidently, all these things take place literally on the last day, the last hour, even if the two witnesses prophesy for 1260 days. This proves that the seventh trump comes at the last day, at the end of their prophecy and the age, not seven judgments, seven bowls earlier, but right before the completion of this final judgment, 1260 days after the great tribulation begins. Uh, my note here, people, when the two witness things the two witnesses uh, are killed. Um, my opinion is, and I could be wrong, you know, let me tell you something. The apostles asked Jesus if, when he was going to come back and restore the kingdom to Israel. And Jesus said, neither the angels in heaven knew and he didn't know, but only God the Father. And if, and if, and if there was something that Jesus didn't know, who in the world am I, okay? Or any of us. So, but my opinion is, uh, when the two witnesses appear and are killed, that's when literally there's going to be hell on earth. And I believe that's in, like in Matthew 24, it says, uh, God's people are to flee to the mountains. When you see Jerusalem surrounded by uh, the armies. Now, it happened in 70 AD, and I believe it's going to happen again. Uh, a lot of times there's a partial fulfillment, 
And then there's an ultimate fulfillment. You know? Um, I, let's face it. People were reading the Messianic prophecies, and they thought, well, Christ is coming back to set up his kingdom. They're going to overthrow, he's going to overthrow Rome. Well, there were two aspects of the Messiah. There was the suffering servant. I believe it was Isaiah 53. And then there was the, the king that's coming to rule and reign. So a lot of people miss that. There's, there's usually a far, partial fulfillment and then an ultimate fulfillment later on. All right, so let's see. Um, I believe that uh, it's going to be hell on earth after the two witnesses are killed, literally. All right, so that's the end of me, my commentary. Let's read what Sally says. This great earthquake may be directly related to the fiery furnace the earth will become or may cause or strengthen the other. Bob's note here. That's really interesting. Uh, the earth's going to be destroyed with fire, you know? Can you imagine all the volcanoes in the world and new ones opening up and all the magma of the earth covering the earth's surface with with lava? Boy, she just made me think about that. That's pretty interesting. Uh, the great earthquake may be directly related to the fiery furnace the earth will become. One may cause or strengthen the other. The earth is destroyed by fire, a baptism of sorts. I did a series on that, fire. A baptism, uh, a baptism of sorts, and she writes, and as with the blood, the flood, flood of Noah's day, the earth's baptism by water, when the waters came from above and below the earth, uh, she writes mostly below, this fire may follow that same pyre pattern, fire from above and below, mostly below, God may awaken the massive cauldron known as Yellowstone among others around the world, along with volcanoes in every nation and island. The mountains and islands may be gone, as stated in Revelation 16.20, due to being flattened by extreme volcanic activity. The seventh judgment measures other events going on at the same time, but rather than assuming that something not mentioned isn't happening, one must put all the pieces together from elsewhere in the Bible, Old Testament, New Testament alike. The book of Isaiah, for instance, paints a very vivid pictures, a very vivid picture of things to come. Amen, Sally. Wow. I, I am so, I am so, I, I, I don't like to use the word proud, but I'm very honored that um, I got to meet Sally and help her on her path about back in the mid nineties. And uh, her husband, who was a high school friend of mine, a uh, long time ago when dinosaurs roamed the earth. Um, that's a joke, by the way. Um, I knew him then and uh, went to visit them. And uh, wow, she's, she's turned into a somewhat of a scholar, I guess you could say, right? So, all right. Well, uh, you know what? I'm going to make this... Uh, I think I'm going to make this part one because she's going to go to the Old Testament now and uh, we're going to see what happens. And then we're going to go to, uh, yeah, we're going to go to Isaiah in the next one and then Second Peter. We're going to do Ezekiel and then we're going to go back to the New Testament, do some Paul. Then we're going to go back and do some Revelation, then Acts then the book of Mark, and then Kings, and then back to Revelation. So, boy, she's, I haven't even, I haven't even read through this. I trust her work so much that I've, I haven't even read through this. Um, wow. This is, this is really good. All right. Um, I guess I'm going to end this and we'll start a part two um, in Isaiah. All blessings, praise, glory, and honor to the Lamb of God, slain before the foundation of the world, in Jesus' precious name. Amen.